Okay, in this video, I'm going to explain how engineering businesses can turn cash flow into wealth. Um, so this applies to business owners, businesses, but also self-employed contractors as well. And this is a sort of thing that just doesn't get taught in school or just by people, by accountants, like in terms of managing cash flow within a business making profits um, work for you to generate um, more wealth, more liquid within the business. And I've only learned this recently through investing a lot of my own money into coaching programs where I'm learning from business owners that are way past me and also investing in a high level accountant who, yeah, does, does cost quite a lot, but is worth it because they save you money in the long run. So this is how these types of business owners structure their business accounts to, to make more money within the business um, and not get taxed on it or you doing things in the right way when it comes to tax efficient. Uh, efficiency sorry so let's let's just what i've got is i've got some covers over these these bits so let's break it down bit by bit so first of all you've obviously got your business current account okay and what you want to do is you want to keep depending on the business but you want to keep like three months of working capital within that business you know, so you can, all expenses, so, you know, paying for um, office space, rent, employees, all expenses, basically, you want to cover and have that in that current account up to three months, maybe six months, depending on the business, but you want minimum three months working capital. So once you've built up a big enough pot in your business's current account where you can cover that there's really there's no point having additional capital liquid cash in that account because you're not making any interest off it it's just there it's it's yeah you, you're losing money ultimately so what you want to then do is everything in addition to that three months of working capital and this is provide you know this is bearing in mind that you're not allocating cash into other types of investment like this is just like standard day operating you know you're not expanding or growing the business um so you've got that in there then what you want to do is you want to set up a 30 day notice account um what's also known as a liquidity manager because what you can do with these with a 30-day notice typically in the uk at the moment um you can get around two and a half percent on on your cash that is in these accounts but it means you can't withdraw anything for 30 days so if you need to pull funds from this account you've got to give 30 days notice but that should be absolutely fine. If you've got three months working capital and you're thinking ahead, if you do need to pull cash out of this account to put into an investment or grow the business or hire someone new, and you've got that in your, your budget, um, you can pull that out. You know, you only got to wait 30 days. So then what you want to do is everything that surpasses three months working capital you want to put into this 30 day liquidity manager or 30 day notice account where you're earning two and a half percent on that cash. So what what I've been recommended to do, and again, this will depend on your business and you know how much cash you need at short um, with with short notice, 30 days. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I would put six months of working capital in here. Okay, so now that's that's take that's and I would put like all my if if I'm separating a pot for like tax VAT that I want to put aside so I don't spend it out of my business current account, which 
I would recommend. So I'd put that into another account. But now what I would do is I would put all of that, including six months of working capital into this 30 day notice period. So if I have to pay my VAT bill every quarter, um, I can I only have to wait 30 days to pull that out. Um, or I can take it out of this working capital and then quickly recover it from this 30 day notice period. So then you let that build up. So you've got six months worth of working capital in here. So three months here, let that build up, let that build up. Then you move over here and you let that build up, let that build up. And then anything that surpasses that, because again, you're, you're not really gonna need, you can access six months worth of capital relatively quickly within 30 days. You know, any additional cash or profit on top of there, on top of that, then you want that cash to be making more money for you and creating more wealth um, as a business owner, self-employed contractor. So then what you wanna do is you wanna set up an S&P 500 uh, investment fund or trust fund. And all your additional profits, you know, once this is at your six month working capital and this is at your three months working capital, then everything can just be invested straight into this S&P 500 invest, investment fund or trust. And this can be, these are all in the name of your business. Um, so, you know, you're not having to pay, you're not actually pulling this out of your business. So you're not having to pay tax on on you know transferring this cash by the way just a quick disclaimer like i don't take my legal advice don't take my tax advice don't take my money advice like this is this is just what i've learned i'm not an expert so obviously consult <laughs> an accountant or a you know someone who's qualified so don't listen to me um this is just what i've learned recently um and do so listen to this education this training uh, at your own risk and all of that stuff okay um so then what you do is you set up this smp 500 fund this costs a fair amount of money to set up i think it costs around two to five grand to actually have an accountant set this up obviously if you're using an accountant you're getting them to manage it all like that would be my recommendation like you're focusing on the business like just get your accountant to focus on the things that they're good at and you focus on running and growing the business but all additional capital all additional profits can then go straight into this um this this trust this fund where you're earning on average depending on the market that year but on average about 10 percent um now i don't know exactly how long it takes to recover this like the liquidity of cash in here um because i'm not here yet basically um so yeah i'm not sure if it takes like 30 days 90 days or whether it's instant not sure um and obviously there's there's risk here with these types of accounts you usually get 85k protected by the government in if you're in the uk so guaranteed if anything happens it's backed by up to 85K. Obviously here, it's completely at your risk. So, and this is this is like a long-term investment strategy. Okay, so you, you're not wanting to pull money out of this, you know, in 30 days, 90 days. This is like, you know, five years, decades at a time, um, where that, that fund, that, that pot has time to mature and you know it it weathers the ups and downs of the market so that's all like business related business accounts now also and again if you're in the uk and it will depend where you're at in terms of tax relief and all the rest of it but in terms of tax efficiency personally and creating wealth personally um it would go something like this. So then into your personal account, every month as a salary, to be as tax efficient as possible. Now, this is if you can afford to take this amount out per year as a salary. Um, 
So what does that work out? I think that's just below the the upper threshold in the UK where you're paying more tax. Um, so if we do that times 12, whoops. Yeah, so that's around like that 50K mark where you're paying, if it's below 50K per year, you're on the lower threshold um, as far as I understand it. Um, now, obviously, that's only if you can afford to pay yourself that. Um, depending what you're doing with the business and all of that, like you might not want to pay yourself that. But if you can, then you want to take that out because I, again, I can't, I'm not a financial advisor or an accountant, but you, if you take less than that out, then you can't you can't recover it the next year or something like that. I know that doesn't make sense, but it 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 does make sense to take this out if you can. It's more tax efficient, even if you're taking less, because you're not getting a tax benefit of taking out less, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't, but there you go, I'm not an expert. Um so then you pull that out every every month. And then what you want to do is you want to set up like a, a 90 day notice account so another liquidity manager but this is in your personal name like you own this personally not not the business uh, and you can see here this is your your this is at four and a half percent but you cannot recover any cash from this um, up until 90 days you've got to give you got to wait 90 days after you re request that. And what you do with this is you well, you can obviously do whatever you like with this, but what I was recommended to do is you set this up and then you put, if you're taking this every year, every month, you put this 270 quid away every month and like you almost name this account as HMRC's money. And this is this is like building up a pot for your personal tax that you'll pay at the end of the year and that 270 um 270 that will be like you know three and a half k at the end of the year and you would have earned some dividends at four and a half percent on top of that what you might what what you might also want to do is if you're not you know spending all of this you might want to add additional funds into this 90 day notice period account um, or you have some other pension pot or maybe you have you know a S&P 500 investment fund in your own personal name I don't know this is kind of as far as I've got with this um, but yeah hopefully uh, that makes sense again don't take my advice I'm not an expert do so at your own risk and all of that stuff and if you're a business owner or self-employed contractor and you're looking to learn the skills in controls automation BMS or upskill your team members where you can take on all of this kind of controls work in-house, make more money, more profit, then click the link in the description. Or if you're looking to advance your career, click the link in the description and we might be able to help you with that.